I want to circle back to choosing the right mate. Do you know who Paul Dolan is? It rings a bell. Tell me more about him. So Paul Dolan was looking at some marital studies and he interpreted them in a way, and I don't know if it was intentional or not because I'm not Paul Dolan, but he interpreted it in such a way that marriage makes women miserable and it's beneficial for men only. And this idea of having kids actually makes women more miserable. So childless women are happier. But I guess the way that the data was presented, it was like, is your husband out or has your husband left? And it wasn't identified like, did he leave the kitchen? Are you alone? Or did he physically leave the house and you are separated? So kind of a big thing to decipher between. He did not. So literally the women he was talking to were estranged from their spouse. So of course they're going to report dissatisfaction and raised levels of unhappiness. But he took it as like this feminist movement, be independent, you don't need kids and you don't need um, a man. And when it comes to the child studies or like child list stu uh, studies, I'm sure you know that like they are particularly looking at like in the throes of the newborn baby stage. And they're like, of course, you know, these parents are unhappy, don't have kids. Well, like, go scale out to when they're the adults are, you know, in their 40s and 50s. And actually they surpass the people that don't yeah. have kids. So it almost seems like the sneaky way that people are purposefully misinterpreting data um, to maybe suit some kind of agenda, some kind of feminist agenda, some kind of childless agenda. I'm not really sure. So I'm 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 not sure that I can speak specifically to the Paul Dolan uh, studies that you referenced, but maybe I can put the ge more general question in an evolutionary framework. And I think last time that I was on your show, we probably covered uh, some evolutionary themes. So you you know humans are in a conundrum in that we both have the deep desire to engage in long-term coupling because we are a biparental species. I mean, by definition, biologically, men, human males are some of the best dads in the animal kingdom in that we, we certainly do stick around and invest a lot more than just copulation. And so we are a biparental species, so it makes perfect evolutionary sense for us to develop the emotional bonding system of romantic love and that we, we, because we need to stick together for long enough to see our children get to sexual maturity. But of course, as you also know very well, Candace, we have evolved a desire for variety seeking. And actually, I have a whole chapter in my forthcoming book on variety seeking as a pathway to happiness. Now, I talk about many different forms of variety seeking food variety seeking, exercise variety seeking, sexual variety seeking, intellectual variety seeking. And so humans are, are, are really in a Darwinian conundrum because from this side of my brain or mouth, I completely want to bond to this one woman and be faithful to her. But I also, from this side of my mouth or brain, see all sorts of beautiful women that I really would love to have an intimate encounter with. Now, there is no sort of absolute prescriptive uh, you know, uh, remedy to that. Uh, we also have evolved a moral compass that allows us to uh, assuage many of our Darwinian instincts. If I've made a commitment to someone for a monogamous union and I feel that if I were to violate that, that would be a betrayal of our trust, then notwithstanding the fact that I would look at tons of women and say, oh my goodness, I, she is so gorgeous, uh, that's the price that I have to pay to be true to my monog monogamous union. So all other things equal, though, I would say that the research shows that marriage does correlate with happiness. Uh, it, it's not a massive effect, but it certainly uh, does correlate. So all other things equal, certainly having a good partner is very important. That's why to our earlier question, when I said that there are two important decisions, choosing the right spouse, choosing the right profession, again, there is no singular recipe for how to know who's going to be your optimal spouse. But there are certain general guidelines that we can use to decide that.